Okay, so with the iPad OS 16 update, the iWork apps, Keynote pages and numbers have all also had an update. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to just jump in and have a look. Maybe not at the full update list and everything that's in there, but maybe some of the more obvious things to help you kind of understand navigating the app, but also some of those really, really useful or quirky things that have been updated. There's some really, really nice touches in there. So let's jump into Keynote and start to take a look at some of those changes. So you'll notice, first of all, there's just some slight changes at the top search bar. Uh, there's a, a navigation thing here, so you can move forward and backwards between you know previous screens if you looked at. It's a nice way to just navigate through the screens. And there's also some additional things when we go into those uh, apps themselves. So if I jump in now, I'm just going to start a, a blank presentation. And the first thing you're going to notice here is the top bar, there's been some changes. So now those kind of quick add things that used to be a plus over here are now front and center for you to be able to add in your media. It's all still there, the same as it was before. Um, your shapes, you know, everything is still as it was. It's just moved its location. You put your charts and, and your graphs, etc., all happen up here. Now, there's, there's a reason why this is really good, um, and it's because you can now personalize this. So these are the four um, or five, if you include the kind of play button as well, that, that will always be on the screen. And the ones that we use all the time when we're creating presentations. However, there's some that used to be kind of hidden under the edit option or the formatting option that we can now move and have a customizable top bar. So to do that, you tap on the three dots over here. You'll see you get this option then to customize your toolbar. And you'll see you kind of have this mixture of different editing formatting tools that you might want to add to that top bar for you to be able to use it. Let's imagine that you do a lot of uh, image work and you want to be able to move those uh, elements forwards or backwards. You can add them to your top bar. And again, everything in there that you kind of utilize um, when you're making your presentations personalized to the things that you want on the screen when you use them. So you just tap that and you'll see that they appear at the top. As you select something that can be formatted in the in the tool that you've used, it will highlight if it can't and it, it's gonna stay grayed out. So really, really nice touch there. And of course, if you ever wanna go back to the start, you simply just tap reset, it's gonna move them all back to the start. So you could set this for, uh, you know, if you're doing a whole load of, of work at a period of time, um, but then tomorrow you might be doing something different, you could reset it so you go back to that basic setup again. So that's a really, really nice touch. A couple of other things to kind of look at in terms of the UI changes. You'll notice over here you have your presentation. Uh, the title used to be over here. It's now moved over to the side. And you've got a drop-down bar alongside it. That's quick access to other things as well here. So you'll see that you've got your presentation options sit here. They used to be over in the options this side. It's now over here, quick access to those things. We can quickly rename it, move it. Uh, this is your new export. So this is where we can export things. Um, again, same as you did before, that opportunity to export it as a PowerPoint or, or movie or images, etc., etc. Um, again, that used to be over this side, so it's less hidden, I guess. It's like these are your presentation tools, uh, what you want to do with the presentation. Um, and then you now have a share button here. So there never used to be a share button on the top here. It used to kind of, again, be hidden three dots here and you'd have the share or export. Now we've got a share button here because we now have the option to be able to share this either as a copy or collaborate directly. And then we can kind of start those collaborations directly within this. So this again, really, really nice touch. Now back to this side again, a couple of the other things that you can do. But we also have that option to have presentation options. So your presentation setup, what type of presentation you want to do. So if we take a look at presentation setup, Again, quick change in between all those different themes. So quick access to those things again, really, really nice touch. And then a presentation type. So again, thinking if you wanna loop those things, uh, restart, so great if you kind of are setting something that's gonna go on a, a display somewhere, um, you know, those break time things that you might wanna put up on, on your, your screens, etc. So nice little activity that you can put in place there. And again, quick access to those those uh, other elements. Nothing's really added in to this. It's just moved where it is on the screen. So again, some nice little touches there. Now let's have a look at some of the added kind of 
input things though this is the kind of where the creativity can really come into this we've always been able to add in different elements here such as being able to have a live video so here i am uh, not great lighting behind me but there we go um this is me uh using a live video now what's great here i've got a bit of a messy background with pictures on the walls etc what we can now do if i go over to the paintbrush formatting tool is i can remove the background so by tapping that, instantly gets rid of the background and it just leaves me. So again, if you've got like an untidy room behind you or whatever, great. I'm also thinking though, this is going to lend itself really, really nicely to some creative touches in the classroom. The fact that I can now kind of, you know, interact as opposed to a certain extent, if I can kind of work out where I am, with the actual presentation itself, because what was here was my background and now that's now see-through, you can see the presentation. I think you people can do some really, really creative video creation tools with this. If you don't want it to be like that though, if you don't want to have, kind of have that kind of nothing um, behind you and that opacity through to your presentation, you can fill the background uh, with colors or images or anything. So you've got all of that option to be able to change those things. You know, as you would with, with lots of other things, if I want to be in a nice kind of foresty background, I can change that. So again, nice creative touches. Good if you don't want to have your background um, wherever you might be working in there. But also, like I said, I think this could lend itself quite nicely. Uh, give this to children. They'll probably come up with some fantastic ways to use it. Okay, so let's just remove that. Another touch, if we just go back into those pictures again, I can just add in a picture. So let's just say... Uh, this time I'm going to add in this picture of my dog. And we've seen this before. This you, this was just basically instant alpha. Um, but now it just says remove background. And remove background will just instantly take that out. So where I like this is that was a busy background. Um, if I'd gone for the old one of, you know, touch the colour and drag it, it, it can take a long time, certainly if there's a busy background. This has just got rid of that whole background for me without having to select all those individual colours. Now, it still has the option to drag across colours if you want to, to be that kind of refined touch, but it will just identify the main image or the main kind of source material for that picture and then remove the background around it. So again, it's going to work differently depending on the pictures that you're using and how busy they might be. But I thought I'd try this one as an example because that's ordinarily a busy background. If I tried doing it, in fact, I can show you here, it's going to take me a long time to find all those individual colors to get the background. It's really, really untidy doing it that way. Just simply removing the whole background in one go. Tap that button. Done. Nice and simple. Again, great way for children to be able to use it in a class or anyone to use it in a classroom. It doesn't have to be children, but another fantastic tool uh, to help. Now, these features, I always usually show these in Keynote. I love using Keynote. These features go across uh, into pages, also go across um, into numbers as well in terms of using these uh, kind of instant alpha quick shortcut tools, uh, customizable bars across the top. That's going to cross the whole of the iWork suite. So there we go, kind of a quick overview of what is new, what is updated within the iWork suite. I uh, thought I'd just have a play around with some of those creative ideas, but absolutely love to see what people come up with using this in the classroom with students.